On March 27, 1977, two Boeing 747 passenger jets collided on the runway at Los Rodeos Airport on the island of Tenerife, causing the most devastating plane crash in the history of aviation. The two planes, along with others that day, were scheduled to arrive at Las Palmas Airport on the nearby island of Gran Canaria. However, due to the explosion of a small bomb and the subsequent closure of this airport, all incoming planes were redirected to land at the smaller airport on Tenerife. Now known as Tenerife North, Los Rodeos was a regional airport that could not easily accommodate all of the traffic diverted from Gran Canaria. The airport only had one runway and only one major taxiway running parallel to it. There were also four mini taxiways connecting the two. The gathered airplanes took up so much space that they had to park on the long taxiway, making taxiing impossible. Instead, planes set for departure had to taxi up the main runway itself to get into position for takeoff. Once on the ground at Tenerife, the two flights involved in the accident, KLM Flight 4805 en route from Amsterdam and Pan Am Flight 1736 from Los Angeles readied for takeoff back to Gran Canaria. Manning the controls of the KLM flight were Captain Jakob Beldersen van Zanten, First Officer Klaus Meurs, and Flight Engineer Willem Schroeder. At the time of the accident, van Zanten was KLM's chief flight instructor and had appeared in ads promoting the airline. The KLM jet was carrying 14 crew members and 235 passengers, including 52 children. After landing at Tenerife, the passengers disembarked at the terminal. One passenger who lived on the island with a boyfriend did not reboard the plane. The Pan Am crew consisted of Captain Victor Grubbs, First Officer Robert Bragg, and Flight Engineer George Warns, along with 13 flight attendants. On board were 380 passengers. The plane, named Clipper Victor, had a colourful existence. It operated the inaugural 747 commercial flight in January 1970, and seven months later became the first 747 to be hijacked, being forced to land in Havana, Cuba. Due to the relatively high altitude at Los Rodeos, the airport is 633 metres, or 2,077 feet above sea level, drifting clouds of different densities would cause unpredictable visibility. One moment visibility was good, the next you could barely see in front of you. The authorities reopened Gran Canaria Airport once the bomb threat had been neutralized. The Pan Am flight was ready to prepare for takeoff, but its path was blocked on the taxiway by the KLM flight, which had decided to refuel instead. Refueling took about 35 minutes, after which time the passengers reboarded. The search for a missing Dutch family of four that had not yet returned to the plane merely prolonged the delay. Once refueled, the tower instructed the KLM flight to taxi up the entire length of the runway, then make a 180 degree turn to prepare for takeoff. Shortly thereafter, the Pan Am flight was instructed to taxi behind the KLM flight and exit the runway on the third taxiway, or exit C3, then use the main taxiway to get into takeoff position. However, the crew was not sure whether the controller had instructed them to exit at the first or the third taxiway exit. The crew asked for clarification and were informed, the third one, sir, one, two, three, third, third one. The crew had trouble locating the third taxiway exit, seeing no sign for C3 in the poor visibility. They were so unsure of their location that they were closer to the fourth taxiway exit when the collision occurred. In fact, taking the C3 exit would require a turn of 148 degrees, leading them back towards a terminal. In order to return to the main taxiway, this would require another 148 degree turn. A study performed after the accident by the Airline Pilots Association deemed this second turn would be a practical impossibility. Once the Pan Am plane entered the runway, it experienced rapidly decreasing visibility. As they taxied towards the runway, visibility was at 500 meters, 1600 feet. 
shortly after they turned onto the runway, it decreased to 100 meters, or 330 feet. The KLM plane made its 180 degree turn to prepare for takeoff in relatively good visibility. However, clouds were approaching at speed of about 14 miles an hour, or 22 kilometers an hour. After lining up for takeoff, the KLM captain advanced the throttle and the plane started to move forward. First Officer Mers advised him that they had not yet received takeoff clearance from the air traffic control tower. Captain Van Zanten replied, No, I know that. Go ahead, ask. Mers then radioed the tower that they were ready for takeoff and waiting for our ATC clearance. The tower provided instructions on the route to be taken after takeoff, but did not explicitly state that they were cleared for takeoff. First Officer Mers read the instructions back to the tower and stated that we are now at takeoff. Captain Van Zanten interrupted his first officer with the comment, We're going. The controller, who could not see the runway due to the fog, initially responded with the comment, OK, a non-standard terminology. This reinforced the captain's belief that they had takeoff clearance. The controller then immediately added, Stand by for takeoff. I will call you. A simultaneous radio call from the Pan Am flight caused radio interference, which was audible in the KLM cockpit as a long shrill sound, or a heterodyne. This caused them to miss the crucial last part of the tower's response that they will call the KLM flight back. The Pan Am crew's transmission was, We're still taxiing down the runway, the Clipper 1736. This message was also blocked by the interference and inaudible to the KLM crew. Due to the fog, neither plane was able to see the other on the runway. In addition, neither plane could be seen by the air traffic control tower, and the airport was not equipped with ground radar. Meanwhile, the Pan Am flight had not yet located its taxiway exit, and continued on its confused journey down the runway. According to the cockpit voice recorder, the Pan Am captain said, There he is, when he spotted the KLM plane's landing lights through the fog, just as his plane approached exit C4. When it became clear that the KLM flight was approaching at full speed, the Pan Am first officer yelled, Get off! Get off! Get off! Captain Grubbs applied full throttle and made a sharp left turn towards the grass in a last-ditch attempt to avoid a collision. By the time the KLM pilots saw the Pan Am plane, they were already travelling too fast to stop. They attempted a premature takeoff to avoid a collision, causing a 22 meter or 72 foot tail strike. When it left the ground, the KLM plane was within 100 meters or 330 feet of the Pan Am plane, and travelling at approximately 260 kilometers an hour, or 160 miles per hour. While the landing gear on the nose of the KLM plane missed the Pan Am, its left side engines, lower fuselage, and main landing gear struck the upper right side of the Pan Am plane. The KLM's right side engines crashed through the Pan Am jet directly behind the cockpit. Both airplanes were destroyed in the collision. All 248 passengers and crew aboard the KLM plane perished as did 335 passengers and crew aboard the Pan Am plane. Due to the thick fog and smoke, firefighters initially did not know two planes were involved, as they were concentrating on the wreck of the KLM flight. The investigation concluded that the main cause of disaster was the KLM captain's insistence on taking off without receiving takeoff clearance, compounded by the deteriorating weather and a desire to comply with KLM's new regulations on maximum flight time per day. Other factors it concluded were the thick fog, as neither the control tower nor the two planes could see each other, and interference from the simultaneous radio transmissions. Use of non-standard terminology, such as OK and We're at Takeoff, were also blamed for the accident. As a consequence of the disaster, 
aviation authorities around the world introduced standard terminologies for communication between air traffic control and flight crews, and a greater emphasis on English as a common language. Following the accident, the Spanish government installed ground radar at Los Rodeos Airport. Two memorials to the victims of the disaster were built, one on Tenerife and another in Amsterdam.